Hello there folks, Jose Rodriguez back again. It is now Thursday, the 26th of May. It was a blazing hot day today. We went out to do some shopping to kind of fill the pantry up with some food and just immediately came back home and I've been cooked up at home with the air conditioner just blaring. I'm sure you can hear the noise in the background. But I want to show you what I did. I actually muscled up the Canon Pro 1 up to this level on my shelf. Remember this used to be the home of the Epson R2400 which is now gone to a different owner so here we have the Pro 10 here we have the Pro 9500 and at the very bottom I'll move my little step stool out of the way we have the good old reliable Pro 100 one of my favorite printers now let me show you what came today Let's swing around the room and here we have an Epson Pro 3880. Now, as you can see, it's running low on everything except for the black, and so this has not reached, but not even 30% bottom. So I will be able to modify these cards, reset them, fill them up with some of this ink that I have up here, some of the ink that I have back there. That is all OEM ink. And so I will be able to get the same performance that I would get from these very carts right here. And besides, I have tons of carts to put to use back here as well. And new ones that have not even been opened yet. And those are all Vivid Magenta ones there. At any rate, so I got this home. Came about 3.30 this afternoon. I brought it downstairs. And uh, it was a pain in the neck because it was packed in a bunch of bubble wrap and a lot of little shipping peanuts. So I got rid of all that trash, put it out in the garbage, came back here, turned it on. Before I installed the driver, just powered it on. It went through a charging process. And then I proceeded to do a nozzle check, which was not perfect. The light black and photo black had to about maybe, I would say, 40% of the nozzles were blank. So I installed a driver because there is no way to run a regular cleaning cycle. You have to run a power cycle. And I didn't want to waste more ink than I thought would be necessary. So I installed a driver, ran a cleaning cycle, did a nozzle check, and I was missing probably two little lines in my photo black. So then I went into QImage and ran a purge sheet through it just one time. And as soon as I did that, I ran a nozzle check and it was perfect once again. So that is great. Now the printer also included a Tumi cover, which is unused. It's not even been unfolded. And I have the instruction manual, which is quite fat. I downloaded the latest driver. And this has not asked me to do any kind of auto update of my firmware, which I will always refuse to do, of course. Anyway, so tomorrow I'm going to start working with this a little bit. But let's move over to the P800. And I received this yesterday and set it up, and this was perfect from the very beginning. Everything was just perfect. And um, the inks are about, let us check what we have here. We have to choose our ink levels. And this is lovely because it's a touch screen. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it is about that much about a third down remember these cards are not full 80 ml cards so a lot of the ink is used during the initial recharge of the printer but i really want to show you before i even get into the actual operation of this printer and show you the driver every option of the driver as well as the one on the pro 3880 which i will do videos on that as well but I want to show you two prints that I did. Now remember that I shot a wedding for my friend's daughter. This is a uh, Chinese national who is an MD and worked with me in the laboratory that I worked in for almost 26 years. And I always promised her little daughter that I would take her wedding. I would photograph her wedding when she got married. When she became a big girl and got married. And she never believed me. Well, Uncle Joe came through. And I did shoot her wedding, and it was a lovely, 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 over-the-top wedding, let me tell you. So, I had a great time. Probably did about 1,500 photographs. 
But anyway, so here are two prints. I want you to take a close look at them. One of them was printed with the P800. Another one was printed with the Canon Pro 10. Can you tell which is which? Now this print is closer to the light source, so it's going to appear a little bit brighter. Let me move them this way so they'll be more uh, about the same distance from the... Here we go, let's tilt it like this. And as you can see, first of all, there's no difference in color that I can tell visually. I don't know what the video will do, but visually there's no difference in color. Sharpness, again, not really much difference. The only thing I see, if we really have to be super picky, is super tiny amount of more open um, shadows here in the dark areas of the faces than this print here. Okay, One of them is bigger, and one of them is a little bit smaller. This one I printed, I think it was borderless edge to edge on the 11 and a half inch long paper and this was with a border and of course they were printed days apart so that's the only difference between the two this is one was done with Epson Ultra Premium Luster one was done with Canon Pro Luster can you tell the difference a lot of you are wondering, what should I get? Should I get a Canon Pro printer? Should I get an Epson Pro printer? Well, here you go. Doesn't seem to matter much, does it, folks? Again, I will continue panning back and forth so you can see. Now, let's look at gloss differential. Not much. You can see right there, not much. Visually, from where I'm standing, there's a little bit of gloss differential here in this dress area and some of the highlights on the dresses they show a tiny tiny almost imperceptible amount I, I can see it clearly because I'm so used to looking for it but for most people they will never find it How about over here this one again zero in fact it's even a little bit better than the other one alright so let's unveil the truth this one was done with the Canon Pro 10. This one was done with the Epson P800. That is it, folks. Now, let me back up a little bit so you can see the two side by side. Again, remember, this is closer to the light, so it's going to be a little bit brighter. But as far as luminance, they're both identical. Color in the background, the greens, both identical. Use the ICC profile for the Epson Ultra Premium Luster. Use the ICC profile for the Canon Pro Luster here. Nothing else was done. Printed out a Q image, turning off the printer control for color. And so both prints were printed that way. The only difference, like I said, is just size. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this once again, and I'm going to include another one by the 3880 and see if there's a great difference. Remember, Epson's claim that the P800 produces incredible blacks. And really, folks, I just don't really see it. I really don't see it. Maybe these images are not the type that would, you know, take advantage of that. Remember, when I edit this, I always set up a black point and a white point, And then I go a little bit above that black point and a little bit below that white point, And I use Lightroom to do so. So I get a complete range. My images will contain from the darkest would be you know just above black or the lightest would be just below white and so maybe if i do something with a totally black zero 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 background and compare the two maybe this will be a little bit denser than this one we'll see we'll have to see let me back up and you can see that there's hardly any difference whatsoever let's go at this angle here and again remember this is closer let's put it let's put it this way let's see how if this helps out you can see right there basically there's no difference between the two and if there is you would need some sort of a densitometer to measure the actual tonalities so that is it let's come back tomorrow 
and we'll begin our adventure with the P800 and we'll begin our adventure with the 3880 and of course continue our adventure with the Pro 1. And I think that is it for now folks. There will be no more printers coming into this house. I really cannot house anything else. I do have one empty spot over there so if anything comes across maybe a good good offer for a Pro 1000 that would be the only reason for me to buy another printer. I have the R3000 right there. I have the Workforce 1100 by my work desk so I don't really have any need for anything else unless it is like the Pro 1000. That would be the only other printer that I would buy if the price is right. Now I promised last night that I was going to show you what I have done with the PGI 29 cards. These cards are totally empty. Now, the only reason they're here by themselves is because there's not enough of them to make complete sets. I have to add these to that pile there. These cards still contain ink. That ink has to be harvested, put into little bottles. But in the back, you should be able to see rubber banded sets. So there's one. Two, three, four, five, six times two, that's twelve and four. So that's sixteen sets. And I'll be able to get another batch out of this. And there will be extras. There will be extras of certain uh, colors, such as Matt K. I have a lot of Matt K cards. So if you're a Matt K printer, you should be able to get extra cards and just order them individually. Now I contacted my supplier. And he will have more cards for me. So those are coming. Also, he will have cards for the 3880 that I have to check to make sure that they are resettable. And then I'll go ahead and modify those and maybe add that to the inventory that you can order. Okay, so that'll be it for now. Let me just say goodbye and promise you that starting tomorrow is going to be another fun day. Also, I did ask you guys what you thought about me doing a basic printing series. And I got a response already from one person, and he would love to have that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start designing sort of like a curriculum from, you know, step one, step two, step three, like that. So that I'll have that done. They'll be off of the computer, and I'll just tell you, show you all the basic settings that you need to know, and try to at least, you know, remove the mystery out of printing and out of color management, which I have done in multiple videos before already. But I think I'll do this in a more systematic series. And I'll just use one of my printers to do that. I will not be hopping from printer to printer unless you want me to uh, explain something specific about either Canon or Epson. But uh, usually, once you learn the two system and you learn the basics of how to turn off color management, you'll be fine. All right, so we'll be back tomorrow. Please subscribe, please share, and please like. Until the next time, happy printing, guys. Bye-bye.